Namaste, Venus lovers and beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Danny, physician astrologer. Something really exciting happened since the last video, you guys. We reached over a thousand subs. It's kind of a YouTube milestone for YouTubers. So thank you so much for your support. Any of you out there still lurking, please subscribe. Please like this video. I think you're going to enjoy it. We're going to talk about uh, timeline jumping and Venus through the eclipse season, starting on October 1st through about November 2nd. So let's just talk a little bit about where Venus has been. Uh, we've watched her all summer since April, go through Taurus, through uh, Gemini, through Cancer, uh, through Leo, retrograde, back to Cancer, now direct through Leo. Once again, her final transit of this cycle uh, will be completing the Leo energy. Um, this has been a very impactful time for a lot of people. Venus retrograde in Leo only occurs every eight years. And so a lot of us that um, were affected on our natal charts went through a, an incredibly powerful transition, not only in our creative processes, but also in our relationships, in what we value. We There was a process of re-evaluating, recreating, uh, going inward, and then coming out with a new purpose. So um, what's also special about this uh, next set of uh, transits for the Venus forecast is that Venus has basically slung shot up into the sky as the morning star. And you can see her before dawn, every morning rising higher and higher and higher and higher. And right around the eclipse in the middle of the month, she's gonna reach her maximum elongation as the Eastern morning star. And then we'll begin her slow, slow, slow descent as the morning star. So part of this month is the dying down of a few energies that were building up and peaking towards the end of September. So the beginning of October is these energies dying down. Then there's the eclipse and there's less energy. There's a revisiting of a lot of energies. And so I feel like this is a nice portal for recreating another timeline for yourself, a timeline of your truest potential, a timeline of your highest life and let's get into it so I can show you. Now, um, I'll get into it a little more, but a lot of the transits that are ending the beginning of October are about the third time that Venus has done these transits. And when you have a retrograde loop, you, you have the first experience with the transit, then you have the retrograde transit, and then you have the direct transit again. And so those direct transits are dying off now, or waning off, I should say, and it's an energy that we're used to. It's an energy that helps clarify focus. Even though they might be tough aspects, it's now with a purpose. We now know exactly what we need to do. So let me share my screen. We'll revisit a little bit of these transits. So we'll go back to September and this is what I'm referring to. So. This week prior to uh, the this what this video is covering, you've got Venus trining the North Node and Chiron in Pisces, sextiling the South Node and Mars in Virgo. You have Venus trining the Galactic Center, the Pisces full moon. So when we move into October, Venus square to Uranus retrograde ends, Venus sextile to Mars ends, Venus trying sextile to the nodes and her trying to the galactic center. All this energy wanes off in the first couple of days of October. Uh, on the very first day of October, Mercury enters into Virgo. Okay, so that'll begin all of this. But to towards the middle of the month here where we have our solar eclipse, uh, there's, a, there's a pause in energy. This is, this is the opportunity to go, okay, where am I going now? So you see how you can jump timelines? Uh, and then after the eclipse, there's some very nice energy coming up. You get a trine to Uranus, you get a uh, trine to Pluto and a trine to the galactic center. And then on the 2nd of October, Venus moves into Virgo. So let's describe some of these energies that are waning off in the month of October. Uh, remember from the 20th of September, to the 5th of October, 
is Venus squaring to a retrograde Uranus. So first, uh, Uranus was in Aries. Then it transited into Taurus, just a little bit, a tiny little bit, and then went retrograde and now it's back into Aries. So uh, Uranus will turn retrograde next month and then, or turn direct next month and then begin the forward transit through uh, Taurus. So again, this, this particular transit, this Venus square to Uranus is the third and final time Venus is going to square on Uranus. They were both direct early July, then Venus was retrograde in August, and now Uranus is retrograde and Venus is direct. So there's been an overwhelming tension that's kind of come and gone, been internal, been in external, that creates a tension where we wanted to change things that maybe didn't need to be changed. Um, almost like temptations of the of the of matter. Not in a sexual way, but temptations to go, okay, there's that thing there and I don't like it anymore. So I'm going to change it where maybe you don't necessarily have to. And there, the resolution of this square in this early part of October can be an opportunity to let all that go and just say yes to the harmony the, that, that Venus uh, imbibes. Um, from the 25th of September to right here to Uh, Thank you. Stand by, guys. I'm losing my image. So from the 25th of September to... <laughs> oh, in the photos. There we go. To the 9th. You have a Venus trining the North Node, which is also conjunct Chiron in Pisces, and Venus sextiling the South Node in Virgo, which is now conjunct Mars. So when Venus first was working with this energy, she was direct, then she was retrograde, now she's direct again. And also Chiron is in the mix and Mars is in the mix. And Venus has been activating our North and South collective nodes all summer and this will be the final pass with this so whatever your evolutionary process is wherever your nodes are that may also be important i know that she's been doing a lot of activity on my nodes but in the opposite direction so uh trining the south node and sextiling the north node so it just depends on your natal energy what that will feel like for you um then also from the 26th of september to the 11th of October, Venus has been trining the galactic center. This is the same situation. This is her last and final transit in a trine to the galactic center, first direct, then retrograde, and now direct again. So this is cosmic ascension energy that we're dealing with. And the galactic center isn't necessarily important if there's nothing in your personal galactic center. However, if you've got something in there like a Uranus or a Pluto or your North Node, then Venus trining the galactic center is important. So you're continuing to do that work, that flow towards whatever your ascension energy is. Uh, from the 13th of Mars all the way to the 10th of October, Venus has been sextiling Mars. Mars moved into... Uh, Virgo not too long ago and on the 24th became conjunct with the south node and you guys know that I've been watching that Venus and Mars got real close to each other until she stationed retrograde and then she went backwards and Mars kept going they will not unite again until uh February of next year and they'll both be conjunct Pluto and Capricorn so that's going to be a very exciting time and not too far away All right. So those are the transits that we're backing off of here at the beginning of October. Once those energies wane away, there will only be one specific energy that Venus will have to deal with, and that is opposing Saturn energy. Now, right before this happens, this particular transit, 
Mercury enters into Virgo. And I like to talk about Mercury because it's a personal planet and affects all of us in a collective way. So on October 1st, as Mercury transits from Leo into Virgo, you're going to get a, a Mercury that was very expressive, speaking about itself, speaking about expression, that will go now into the nitty gritty. So the communication styles in channeling, in how you interact with people and how you transmit and receive information, uh, is going to be getting its influence from earth energy rather than fire energy. So I do have a Mercury retrograde video that talks about this particular Mercury cycle as well as short a short video on Mercury's full cycle. So please do check those out. I will leave those in the links in the comments in the description. So that's a new energy. Venus and Mercury work close together because they are the inner planets. So let's talk about this Venus opposing Saturn. Saturn is retrograde in Aquarius. This energy wave is going to peak probably a few days before the solar eclipse. And right as these other energies that we just talked about are waning away. We already understand the energy of Venus and Leo. We've been talking about that for months now. Venus and Leo is a very uh, fiery Venus, full of passion, full of desire, full of creativity, okay? And to oppose a Saturn, you know, an Aquarius that can be afraid of doing something crazy, that can be... Um, uh, can, can project uh, disdain for people that are special. So a retrograde Saturn, this is internal work. So there might be some battles to, oh my gosh, I have this great creative idea, but oh no, there's too much responsibility, too much duty associated with it. I wouldn't be good at it anyway. Okay. So that opposition can be difficult to deal with, but these, these trines, these sextiles, uh, they're waning away as this energy is increasing. Now, if you are someone that respects the authority of Saturn, respects the responsibility and the duty of Saturn, this can be an integrated enter energy that's mature and relaxed about expressing the self. So we're not we're, we're going to do what we have to do, but we're not going to get too excited about it. We're going to go ahead and accept that this is what needs to happen as we develop this energy. So it's a balancing between what we're responsible for and what we truly desire to do. And if they're the same thing, then the Saturn energy is easy. So if you really want to do something, then you have a sense of duty for it. Hope that makes sense. On the um, 4th of October, Uranus enters back into Aries as well. So uh, that energy of, of Taurus, of Uranus and Taurus, where we might have gotten a glimpse of what the financial systems might how they might change or how we're grounding our um, realization, the metamorphosis of ourselves is now in a reflective phase asking, are we truly sure this is who we wanna be? So um, Uranus, like I said, will go direct again next month and through Aries. So we should be pretty sure of the direction we wanna go. And as Uranus transits into uh, Taurus next year, It'll be it'll be grounded in tar and energy, and we'll be able to um, actually externalize our internal metamorphosis that's been occurring. On uh, ten ten, uh, as all these bigger energies from last month are waning away, Pluto is going to station direct, and um, we've been watching Pluto a little bit too. And Pluto's squaring our collective north and south node. This is an energy of a big lesson for our entire collective. And this will be the third transit once Pluto stations direct. The rest of this year and early next year will be a completing of Pluto squaring our collective nodes. And this will feel a lot better than it did earlier this year. We'll be welcoming the changes because we've been doing the inner work as Pluto has been uh, retrograde. So, so we've got new energy coming in, we've got energy going out, and then this eclipse occurs with this duty to do, to work for what we really want. Okay, so this is an opportunity to jump timelines. 
Okay. So as we get to this solar eclipse on the 14th of October, uh, there is, um, if you are not in the path of the eclipse, you still have time, find your way to where the eclipse is going to occur because the moon will conjunct the sun and create a ring of fire around the moon. This is very brief. Um, somehow by the, the grace of the divine, I am literally in the path of the eclipse on this Saturday afternoon. So it's like a gift from the universe. I'm so excited. I've got my eclipse glasses ready right here. And um, I think I'm going to take a quick intermission and just take you guys through what I've been working on for the eclipse. And I want you all to get on board with me. So I released this package about a week ago, two weeks ago now. And I want to help you guys understand your true Venus power, your true Venus creative energy, your path to immortality through your creative legacy. This, this portal, this eclipse is an opportunity to make a timeline jump, to change the way that you see yourself. Uh, because I know personally, I'm tired of shadow work. I am tired of the wounds coming back. I'm ready to just embrace them and love them and be the full Dr. Danny. Okay. And so I know a lot of you are too. I know a lot of you are probably very tired of your wounds popping up and coming back up. And this is an opportunity to change that. So I've got a couple of different things. You can get the whole thing together for a nice uh, low price, or you can get things separately if you want to. I will leave the links down there below. There's a recorded reading that several of you have gotten, and it's amazing. The, uh, if you don't want a reading, but you want to look at your chart, I can provide you with a few um, Sinistry professional PDFs uh, for $39, so you can look at where your energies are going to be. If you want to sit down and talk to me for $97, we can we can do a quick counseling session, work on some of your stuff, um, and I can show you how to channel that energy through the eclipses. And then I have a, a recorded meditation that I created. It is a, a mirror meditation with binaural beats. You want to wear headphones for this, you can um, order this for $33 and download it and keep it forever and listen as many times as you want. Okay, so that's what I've been working through. There's a video here on YouTube too, where I talk about everything and I talk about how how to use this energy. So it's not just me telling you things. I actually have a, an idea of how to work with you. So I appreciate y'all uh, letting me take that little intermission and show you what I'm working on. Um, let me quickly show you my YouTube channel where you can get your um, the shorts that I discussed. This is the cycle we're in right now with the evening star. So um, it's a quick video, one minute, but it's 584 days. So it's from October of 22 to June of 24, and it goes from superior conjunction to superior conjunction of Venus. And then I've also got this cycle of Mercury uh, all the way through to the 20th of October. And there's my latest video. So do like, do subscribe, leave me some comments, tell me where your Ophiuchus is. We can work that out, figure out what you need to do, how you need to work on that energy. All right, so that's the eclipse. Right after the eclipse, uh, the opposition to Saturn ends and Venus begins a trine to retrograde Jupiter in Aries. This trine lasts all the way until the 26th of October. Uh, so this is the only energy that we that our Venus energy is going to have after the eclipse. And this is such beautiful energy. Jupiter in Aries is about faith in the self, especially internal retrograde. There's a lot of internal work and expansion. And Venus has just completed three squares with Jupiter over the summer. First, as an evening star, she was descending in front of the sun. Then as a baby morning star. And now, uh, uh, these were squares. Uh, and now she has a trine. And so after three squares and after several hits to the self-confidence, after the roller coaster ride of Jupiter squaring Venus retrograde and direct, Venus retrograde and direct, we now have a trine. And it's energy that I can only describe as like true happiness, trust, and love. 
a revelation, a new meaning. It can bring luck and optimism as well as confidence and cheerfulness. So this is a wonderful transit right after the eclipse. So you see how you can kind of go through this eclipse and then come out and have this amazing, optimistic, expansive energy with your creative power. I'm I'm absolutely looking forward to this time frame. And if you're working on something creative, launch it right around this new moon and you'll be it'll it'll be like being in heaven. <laughs> At least that's how I look at it. Then Mercury conjuncts the sun and that ends this current Mercury cycle. This is a superior conjunction. So Mercury, watch my Mercury retrograde cycle video because I explain the difference between superior and inferior conjunctions. And uh, usually when you've got a Mercury direct conjunct the sun, it's a superior conjunction. And it marks a new Mercury cycle. So after this, more energy will be coming in, more information. Uh, this helps you sort of put into words and images and, and concrete interactions the creative energy uh, that you need to move forward. Uh, so that's a brand new cycle right there. And then as the Jupiter-Venus trine starts to wane, we get a Venus trine to Uranus. And it's the same situation that Venus had with Uranus. Remember at the beginning of this video, we talked about the three, the third square to Uranus ending on the fifth, and now she's going to form a trine. So we've, we've been beat around a little bit by these large planets, both by Jupiter and by Uranus, and now we're entering into a trine phase. This is another wonderful energy that our creative process can enjoy and that our relationships can enjoy and the things that we value and love. So this is a welcome change. This is like a breath of fresh air. This is a, a transformation in the positive direction. So then you have, you have expansion after the eclipse and then a positive change. So I hope you guys are feeling that energy. This is so incredibly exciting. All of this energy then leads into the lunar eclipse, which is on the cusp of Pisces and Aries and is a full moon. So this is okay. If there's anything left over from before the eclipse, this is absolutely time to shed it and let it go and get yourself ready for the next eclipse season because there will be another great American solar eclipse in April. So whatever it is, let it go. You don't need it. That's the message for that uh, full moon. And I'll be doing a separate video on that later on this, this month. That very same day, we begin an opposition between Venus and a retrograde Neptune, okay? So as, as Venus, because remember, after the eclipse, now Venus is going to start descending as the morning star and descending and descending, and she'll, she'll get to her superior conjunction in June of next year. So it's a long descent. It takes a long time. So basically from October all the way to um, June of next year, we're going to watch Venus slowly descend and get uh, not as bright, less and less bright. Okay, so this is the disseminating phase of Venus. This is the phase where the harvest uh, comes to fruition and we begin our um, integration and implementation of Venus energy. But Venus is going to oppose a retrograde Neptune. So uh, a Neptune in Pisces, P Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. So these two energies typically are very friendly towards each other in most aspects, even if they're negative or positive aspects. But Neptune in Pisces can bring a, a cloudiness, a dissolution of boundaries, an uncertainty of where to draw a line, perhaps. Um, but a Neptune in Pisces can also mean surrender to the universal love and oneness, while Venus is going to be entering into Virgo a few days later. This is a very practical Venus. This is an integrated Venus. So you're going to have your creative energy needing to have that practical caretaking flair to it, uh, while at the same time, the juicy, sensual, in the mind kind of energy, uh, the, the dissolving, the oneness, the love is uh, 
also going on. So it's a balance. They tend to take energy from one another if we go to extremes. And so you want to try to be very practical with your time if you can. And a Venus in Virgo is very good at that, especially with the sun in Virgo as well. All right. So on the 30th, we're getting to the end here. Both Mars and Mercury enter into the constellation of Libra. They become conjunct in Virgo together and they're next to the eclipse, the solar eclipse, and then they move into Libra together. So Mercury is our channel to the divine, to the Akashic record. Mars is the will of the creator, the will of the divine. And so we're communicating the divine will of the creator. We are transitioning that message from a message of energy to matter and practically working on things to a time of diplomacy, balance, peace, and harmony. Um, on the 30th, also, Venus begins a trine to Pluto. Now, if y'all have been watching my channel, you know that over the summer, uh, uh, with Pluto T-squaring the nodes, all of the personal planets, one by one, went through uh, a mystic square with Pluto and the nodes. They were all opposing Pluto. First, it was Mars, and this was... Um, a very elemental alchemical uh, purification process. Then it was Venus. And this was a transformation of what was valued. You know, where was the focus going? Uh, then Mercury did it and the sun did it and the moon did it. So all of those, all of those luminaries went through this mystic square with Pluto, each one in preparation for that collective node balance that, it's squaring on right now. And so now Venus gets to trine on Pluto. And this is literally, this is literally magic. This is alchemy. This is uh, focusing our evolutionary path and going towards our destiny. And now we've got this magic wand. Now we can change things at our will. Instead of it being something that's happening to us, we get to decide how we want to channel that change energy. So along with the opposition to that Neptune, we're going to get a trine to uh, Pluto. And then also, you guys, uh, in the sky, Neptune and Pluto are sextiling one another. And so this is a beautiful metamorphosis uh, into that universal love and oneness. I, I just think this is a really, really beautiful time. Okay. So now on the 31st, at the very end of the month, uh, Venus squares on the galactic center. So she just ended a, a three-way trine with the galactic center. First direct, then retrograde, now di then direct again, ending on the 4th of October. And now she's entering a square. So you see how all these energies that we've been playing with over the summer, we go through an eclipse and now they're brand new. They're different. We've integrated the squares of Jupiter and Uranus. Now we have a flow. Okay. We have uh, integrated the square with all of our personal planets with Pluto. And now Venus gets to trine on Pluto and use that magic. But she's been trining on the galactic center which is that, so whatever's in your galactic center, that's where you've been activated. And now come some of the challenges. Now comes, okay, plus Venus being in Virgo, it, it's more of a practical challenge this time. So we've done that timeline jump, but now comes new challenges within that timeline. But once again, we understand galactic energy. So now we're going to square on that. And, and honestly, how that works for you depends on what's there. My North Node is there. And so there may be some barriers to me achieving what it is I feel like my soul's purpose is because of the position of my North Node squaring on the galactic center. Fortunately, this is a um, a shorter transit than when, when Venus is stationing on either side of her retrograde. Uh, she tends to move a little bit faster as she moves into this phase of her cycle. And so this square will be brief. It will be from the 31st to the 9th of November. So let me know in the comments where you, what your focus has in it, what's at your galactic center, and 
uh, I can help you with that. All right, and then on the second, Venus finally enters Virgo. This is the close of, a, of an energetic chapter for our Venus energy that becomes about manifestation. So it's a more of a practical Venus, more of a taking care of the business Venus. And she's happy to do it. This Virgo energy, they they achieve uh, enlightenment by, by creating the perfection. So there's a perfection here. And that might be what the square is for me. Like I'm, maybe I think I have to make it perfectly, but I, maybe I don't. Maybe I just have to be me, you know? Uh, so... So this is where the energy becomes manifest and matter becomes physical in this world from the energetic standpoint. All right, that was a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. Make sure you do like this video and subscribe. Let's keep the energy going. Let's see how big I can get my channel. I can't wait to see what I can do. Um, if you guys would like a personalized Venus forecast through the eclipse season or through Virgo, I will leave a link in the description below. You can do that. Uh, you, you can go through the Embrace Your Halo package or you can just order the reading separately. It's totally up to you. These readings are really cool. I'm adding progressed moon energy too. And I am going to be doing a video about progressed moon energy. So y'all understand a little bit more about what that is. But that has been actually really impactful. Um, check out that excellent meditation. It's going to help you jump that timeline and be on your highest timeline. I promise you those binaural beats, man, that's sound medicine right there. Oh, and then also, I didn't tell you this before. So let me share one more time. I'm doing this at the end of my videos because I'm not quite ready to launch, but I'm super excited about it. Uh, I am creating courses for astrology. Uh, this is the one I have available right now. It is base, the basic astrology and astronomy course. I go through all the constellations, including Ophiuchus and Chiron. And uh, it is only $47. You get over six hours of content. You can study at your own pace. If you like astrology, but you want to know a little bit more about astronomy, it's a great primer and vice versa. If you're interested in astronomy and want to learn a little bit more about astrology. So it's perfect. It's perfect for a lot of folks, and I encourage you to check out this course. When you do that, I also give you a, uh, a PDF of your natal chart. It's absolutely free. I'll email you the coupon code to get that. And then this, y'all, is coming soon. I have finished recording this class, but I'm also going to record levels two and three so that those are available to everyone. So stay with me, you guys. Things are building. Things are going to get more exciting. And um, let's see. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for me. I'm about to do an amazing quantum timeline jump uh, to um, serve my highest timeline and reality. So thanks for joining me, you guys. I love you all. Namaste.